Hello everyone. If at this point you've been staying in tune with um, my readings, you'll know that I have read the full first story, Shallow Seeds, from my crime anthology, Life's Dark Corners. And today I will begin. I'll be beginning um, the first chapter of the second story called The Soldier's Widow. Um, that tells the story of a woman named uh, Janine who finds herself targeted by two wannabe hitmen. The question is, why? Well, maybe we'll find out in his read. So, let's start now. The Soldier's Widow, Chapter 1. The alarm rang as it always did at a quarter to five in the morning. Janine pressed a switch on the old twin bell clock, shutting it off. She yawned once before stretching her old bones. This was the hardest part of the day, and she needed to limber up before rising and beginning her day. Janine succeeded in lifting herself up and out of the queen-sized bed. At 78, her body worked with her most days, but there were always those occasions where her legs were too stiff or her arthritis made it difficult to grip the rails installed to help balance her when she sat up. The next thing she did was make her side of the bed. The right side stayed untouched. It was a common ritual ever since Warren's passing four years ago. Even now, Janine stared longingly at the area of the mattress once occupied by her late husband of 54 years. Their love had been one for the storybooks. Every so often, Janine swore she could feel his warm presence almost on a physical level. She reached for Warren's picture, the one of him in his marine uniform when he was only 20, from the top of the old dresser and kissed it. Stay close to me, baby, she whispered to the picture. It was something Warren would always say to her when they, when they were out. He was such a perfect gentleman. The rest of the morning routine was easy with the normal brushing of the teeth, warm shower, and a modest amount of skin cream being applied. It served to give her a sort of glow. She climbed atop the chair of her vanity to reach the hairbrush she kept on the top shelf. Where her inches fell off, leaving her just over five feet tall, she had no idea. Janine brushed her curly, white as snow hair and was thankful she still had a thick head of curls. She sat down to a simple breakfast of bacon and eggs with orange juice before popping some multivitamins. When she was younger, her philosophy was that eating vitamins when you were young meant less pills when you were older. It worked for her. Lastly, Janine grabbed her hat and coat and went out to run her errands and greet the day. It was a brisk day in Billings, but she was delighted to see her neighbors already out and shoveling. Those that could, anyway. She waved at her next-door neighbor, Todd, before getting into her car. Todd had shoveled her driveway first. The grateful elder made a note to bake him a hot cherry pie when she got home. The streets and yards were blanketed with snow, but Janine was a professional driver in the snow. Her habit of driving slow helped as well. She enjoyed looking at the arches of trees, their branches thick with snow, giving the streets an almost magical appearance. Kids playing in the street moved out of the way as she drove past. Some of them waved. Janine smiled and waved back. The first thing she had to take care of was her business at the bank. Janine was never fond of using cash. When Warren had been alive, he'd go on about the government tracking people through their debit cards, especially the ones with the chips. And online purchases were strictly... A no-go except for the occasional Amazon purchase. Janine and Warren always paid their bills with cash or check. Janine withdrew $300 from her account and requested a box of checks. Christmas was coming around. She had to be ready to send out the checks to the multitude of grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and the grandnieces and grandnephews. Would you like your receipt, Miss Stone? Mrs. Stone, the young lady working the counter, asked her. Yes, please, Janine responded politely. And it's Ms. My husband passed four years back. The clerk smiled evaporated. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Janine patted her hand. It's fine. Warren and I had an amazing marriage. The woman's face brightened. I'm sure he's watching you even now, Miss Stone. Janine gave a smile of her own. Always. She left the bank and got back into her car. Only then did she look at the receipt. There was still over a million and a half in the account, plenty for her to live on for the rest of her life, and at least something for her children and grandchildren. Warren insisted on a large life insurance policy for himself, especially when they found out about the cancer. He said he always wanted to take care of her, even when he wasn't around anymore. Only her children knew the amount of money he'd left her. It was no one else's business. Her children were her life. Robert, her oldest, would be turning 50 later this year. He owned his own restaurant with a partner and was happily married with two children in private school. Then there was Simone, the only daughter. She aspired to be an actress once upon a time until she got married and pregnant. Now she was content with being a housewife while her husband Lawrence was the vice president at the same bank Janine had her account. Lastly, there was Sam, the unfortunate black sheep of the family. He was the baby of the family and a recovering drug addict who had gotten mixed up with the wrong people. Hopefully, he could stay on the wagon for good this time. Janine feared that his next relapse would be his last. 
Janine remembered that Robert was planning to come see her today so they could talk about his daughter's birthday. Little Laura, not so little anymore, was having her sweet 16. Janine was the master planner for all family get-togethers for as long as she could remember. Until she went to join Warren, she'd be the family matriarch. The rest of the morning went by with the usual monotonous routine. Janine visited the grocery store to grab some cherries and dough to make the pie crust. After that, she went to see her doctor. As always, aside from the arthritis and occasional stiffness, she had a clean bill of health. Janine left the doctor's office in high spirits. She missed Warren, of course, but she was in no hurry to check out. Her grandchildren stayed close to her, even as they were graduating high school and going to college, one having already started a family. She planned to live for as long as she could. The only issue was that someone else was concocting a scheme to cut that time short. This concludes the reading of Chapter 1 from The Soldier's Widow. Um, if you're enjoying the story so far, my book, Life Star Corners, is available on Amazon uh, for paperback, Kindle, and Kindle Unlimited if you have the subscription. If you would like a signed copy, you can always go on my website, jamesmichaelsbooks.com, and email me for a signed copy, a uh, signed personal copy for yourself. You can also sign up to my email subscription form on my website um, to get updates on any new book deals, book promotions, um, content, events that I have going on, and so much more. Bye.